Welcome back, Zero K fans. Sorry about that. I the game actually has started, but the, I guess they must have exited or something. And apparently, all the fixes that I've done to try to fix exiting, screwing up, and other problems like that have not actually taken. I don't know. It's really weird. Honestly, I don't understand how this game works when it comes to quitting, stopping things. It's just really weird. Oh, right, I gotta turn that off, and then I gotta change it, and then I gotta turn it back on again. Sorry about that. I I know, I really need to have the wind count. Wait, what? I, what? But... But I, I, I turned... I changed it. I, wait, what am I thinking? I'm an idiot. I have a button for this. Reset wins. There we go. Okay, done. Sorry about that. So we're on LLTA Complex, and this map is a map that Clone was not really enthusiastic about, and yeah, I don't disagree. This is very clearly a team map. I don't know why it was picked. I mean, I know that Sir Arturi was kind of the theme, but seriously, Valdez Marineris was also picked, but Valdez Marineris is a little bit more even. This one is just... I mean, I suppose it's kind of nice having the elevation stuff. Spiders can sort of do something up there, but that's not going to happen. As you can see, Clone is... I'm sorry, Forever's going for an air start. Clone is... I'm going for Cloaky start. I'm not sure why they went for Cloaky start. I guess because of the hills and elevation differences. This is kind of... Well, it, it's... It's more of a vehicle map. I can sort of see where Cloakies would... Or where bots would be of some use. But it is largely a vehicle map. In terms of flatness. It's also just square, it's so squarely a team map. I mean, the amount of harassment available to... I mean, look at this. Look how easy it is for this glaive to get around. How big this opening base is. For one player to defend, I mean, Forever is going to easily lose this northeast. Their main base is taking a huge amount of damage. There's no defenses here. Like, the defenders up front, those aren't even useful for... Uh, okay, they are now. But they aren't even super... Th they aren't even that useful, really, all things considered. I mean, Clone... Going over to the northeast, we'll just take this out. I think they'll probably be able to get revenge at this point. <laughs> They're starting out very strong in this match. I... Well, I don't know. This is going to be... I'm sorry, it's not funny on the chat. Forever beat Clone and Clone beat Yurga, so they're forever must therefore beat Yurga as well. No, skill is not transitive. Despite the fact that the entire concept of a tournament is based on that idea, it's not necessarily transitive. And we might actually see Clone get back. Like, if Forever beats Clone again, then okay. But, yeah. I wouldn't say it's necessarily that transitive. There might be something that Forever does that Clone has a hard time dealing with that Yurga wouldn't have a problem dealing with. I mean, Yurga's style of play was much... We saw in the last game, but they were really keen on just getting around and trying to hit rear expansions. Clone's doing that too, right now. I'm really not sure how Clone lost to Forever in the first place. Apparently, Forever just played really well. It would, like, pulls him damn. It got to even matchup. Like, I think Forever does play a lot more team games than they do 1v1s. And Folsom Dam, both Folsom Dam and LCA Complex are very team oriented maps, as is Icy Run for some bizarre, unfathomable reason that is an extremely popular map in team games. I have no idea why. It is way too small. It's hardly big enough for 1v1, let alone 10v10. But apparently, it's used for that a lot. So yeah, Forever, I think, is more of a team game player, but then Clone is also a pretty skilled team game player. But I mean, big team, so that might be why. Like, 8v8, 10v10. Clone, I'm pretty sure, does play those two. But I know they do well with smaller teams. So Clone is, like I said, they're building up. They're doing quite well here. I mean, this map, large eco map, Clone is going to have an advantage. They have a clear advantage. Although, Forever, I'm well, switching to Shield Blood Factory, forward shields. Clone's still ahead economically, slightly ahead militarily. If they... I mean, this is a great timing to hit, too. They're actually going to hit. Oh, these glaives are going to die. The Lotus will just stop all of them. And Clone wisely retreating, because that's what Clone does. Clone tries to avoid losing units unnecessarily. They just try to avoid using lo losing units at all, if possible. That's something that Clone does. That's generally how they play. Because the thing is, is that when you... When you have to... Rebuild units. You're spending a lot of money. You're basically respending money if your opponent didn't lose units. And if you don't you lose any units, then you're in a much better position overall. Assuming you're able to deal damage in the process. Like, if you can deal damage while not losing units, 
then that works out in your favor. You just, you're winning by attrition. Bone, however, winning by pretty sneaky tactic, getting rid of all of these cranes. Very nicely done. What do you want to do? Get rid of, how many cranes are left, actually? One! That was it! That was the last of the cranes. That was the last of Forever's builders at the moment. No shield up builders either. Forever looks like they're going for a bit of a counterattack, but I think this is probably going to be it. That's all they really have to work with are these bandits. They have no builders in the moment. They have no easy way to expand. Their commander, of course, can expand, but their commander's up front. The main base itself is going to get threatened by glaives. Coming around the corner. Actually, does Forever have any way of being aware of this? No, they don't. They have radar that's basically stuck here. Where's the radar anyway? Yeah, right here. So the radar can't really go past this. It's getting blocked off. There's just too much shadow there. Actually, I'm surprised. How is that the radar shadow? Apparently it is. Yeah, apparently the radar is pretty much only working for the south side. And that means that Clone is probably going to take it. I mean, they're, these glaives are coming in. There's nothing in the way. Those cranes can't... There's no cranes to build this up. There's nothing to build the defenses, and there's no defenses around the back. The crane has just gotten rebuilt. Forever now has become aware something's happening. If they're paying attention, they now know something has gone wrong. It's gone terribly wrong. And they're about to lose everything. If Klon, Klon just needs to go south. And there we go. Because this map is so big, these lotuses are going to be of no use. They're going to do nothing. So at this point, forever, all they can really do is scout things out, hope for the best, get rid of a conjurer, maybe. But yeah, that's not going to help too much. And at this point, clone, a pretty healthy setup, I think. Gremlins, Rocco's, Glaze, good mid-game setup. Forever, bandits at seven minutes into the game, not necessarily a bad thing, but... I don't actually... Getting a decent counterattack in, but these glaives should be able to stop things. And of course, Clone's own glaives are just gonna rip everything apart. Like this, this is dead. This lotus is dead. Glaives are gonna come in way too fast. Rip apart the lotus. Rip apart the cranes. Rip apart the lotus under construction. Rip apart everything else. This is dead. These defenders won't even be able to do enough. They won't have enough missiles to do enough. They're also dead. Well, this one. Oh no, not quite. Ah, that last defender. Hero defender saves Forever's base. Saves the rest of Forever's base. But even then, Clone. I mean, they stopped the bandits. Pushed them back. Pushed them over to the north. I mean, it's a little hard to defend here. Sure, Clone's going to lose a few. But still, that is a massive pushback. Oh yeah, pointing out, Clone's air superiority. Clone's air superiority? I don't know. I don't think Clone does. They have a good anti-air. They have a lot of gremlins. But I don't think they have air superiority. I'm fairly certain that, yeah, right now, Forever is the only player that has any air. Clone isn't even building any air units right now. They just took out the Swifts and that was it. They just stopped. They don't have air superiority. They just, they got rid of the cranes and then they stopped building air and they started harassing. And at this point, Forever just now getting even, I think... Most of that's going to be reclaim. Yeah, recla reclaiming rocks and such. So forever falling behind, conspicuously behind, this is a problem. Yeah, this is definitely a problem. This is going to be a thing... thing to worry about, but Clone... Clone has not got much to worry about. I mean, this area is well defended. The bandits can't get through here. Glaives chasing whatever bandits there might be to secure that... secure all of this metal. For clone, which is being taken. They know it's secure, they're taking it. Doing it quite quick, I like that. Forever. Now this is a Maginot line! Holy crap. And once again, there's actually a nice little area you can get around it. Actually, south and north. Eesh. And of course, another Glaive coming in here. But one defender will stop it. However, only the hero defender is up. That's the only one that's up. None have been built since then. No lotuses or anything. I mean, no real builders, honestly, up to this point. Glaive, just get rid of that. Oh, can't get rid of the last one. The Swifts are too much, but still... That's... Continued harassment from Clone is still a problem for forever. Just they can't get through that choke point. This, this trench here. Well, the ditch in the side of the road, really. That's just being too big of a problem. Forever's commander, dangerously forward, and that's gonna be... That's dead. 
Forever, move that back or it's dead. Move that back, it's not dead. Okay, so go attack from the north. Just push in from the center because the defenders won't kill you. Just exhaust the shots while the glaze go in the north. Why not? Actually, that's not a, that's a good idea. Those rockers aren't gonna die. The defenders will. It's not. It's yeah. The Papier Mache Maginot line. Papier Mache. There you go. Papier Mache Maginot line. That's that's what that was. Emphasis on was. It was. It is no more. Yeah, the glaze not even having to. They don't have to hide anymore. They just go straight in. And here's Klonzer's priority, because why not just build like, a dozen... Well, yeah. Build a dozen Swifts right out of the blue and then win. And then take air priority, because why not? Because you have a stronger economy. You can power Swifts if you have to. Holy crap, 60... Wow, that's 70 build power, potentially. Yeah, Clone never has to worry about whether or not they're building enough air. Down goes Forever's Commander, and that's probably... No, it's not game. Forever's not going to throw in the towel. That was nothing in their economy. They have quite a bit of economy beyond that. Although, admittedly, it's dwindling at a very alarming rate, but they still have more economy than that. So, and of course, making sure not to lose too much if they don't have to. Still, Forever at this point has like eight Swifts at this I think? Yeah, something like eight. Exactly eight. Forever's eight. Clone has... Have they have 20? And then... Actually, these Zeus? Eh, not the best idea. I mean, yes, I realize they deal damage to shields pretty effectively, but they're already slow. Against Thug Law, that's not the best idea. Oh, Forever's taking the north side, though. Forever's actually building up their economy pretty fast, too. Hmm. This is worrisome for, for Clone. Although we'll see. I mean, Clone might be able to pull it back. Are they going to run it back? I think it's going to come down to this battle. Like, Forever's army is weaker, and it's more concentrated here. Whereas Clone's army is more... It's more diverse, it's spread out. A lot more raiding potential, like the north side here. They have air superiority, or they very soon will. They now have air superiority, because that's what happens when you already have the position to begin with. Actually, do they? No, it looks like they're actually not in the best of positions. They they have it, but it's a Pyrrhic victory. They Yeah, they gotta get out of there. Oops. No one actually took a lot of damage there. And the south side, no one's Zeus's are they're doing okay, but not great. Although Forever's forces haven't split up enough that it's still gonna work out. The Rockos are really what's giving Clone the edge at this point, but Clone lost a lot of their army there. Actually, Forever might have retaken air dominance. Clone can build up a ton of Swifts and get it back pretty quick, but they sacrificed their ground army in the process, so they have to be very careful about the ground army. But with the Outlaws gone, these rogues are screwed. The Glaive should take them out, and then with that, I think Forever will have to retreat, regroup. They have air dominance for the moment, but they have to retreat and regroup because they haven't got much else. In fact, these glaives are going to go from here. Push through. And... Anyway. And it's World War One and World War Two. Seriously, it happened twice. The, Schle oh, the Schleifen plan was particularly effective. It was super effective, so they did it again. So, anyway, Clone not quite got air dominance yet. I mean, that's not surprising. They want to build up Swifts. They get those up. No, that's Zed, not X. Not X. Yeah, they don't have many Swifts now. But they have a fair amount of Gremlins. That's That helps a lot. They have a lot of gremlins, they have... I 
Okay, so at this point, Kloon is... What are they gonna do? They're gonna have to deal with a roach, that's for sure. I'm gonna lose a rocket to that, I think. Only one! Only one Rocco had to die. Well, not terrible. Oh, Other Wars 2? Okay. I only know about the ones for World War 1 and 2. World War 2 in general was a big fail. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, in North America, everyone acts like it's the reason why war is a good thing. Anyway, that's yeah. Between the between the chainsaws and everything else, oh yeah, it's chainsaws. Between the chainsaws and the gremlins, it's a bit of a problem. But yeah, Clone's not down yet. Okay, now is this gonna be? I think I think Forever's gonna lose air dominance now. A bit hard to tell. I kind of have to go into Dot Wars view, but it looks like yep, Clone's forcing retreat. And I don't think they can advance, though. I don't think they have enough Aryans to be able to advance safely. Although... No, they do! They actually are able to advance. They're able to take air dominance. Klon has won the air game. Now they just need to take the ground game if they want to win. But Forever, what are they doing? They have Striders. They have Dante. Klon has... Air pads. Well, that's scary. They also don't have a lot of easy ways of dealing with this. They do have Reapers, though. So they are going for something relatively... Like, a sort of Strider-like composition. Still a bit scary, but I think that... I think the Reapers will be able to deal with the Dante without too much issue. Especially with the economy now being ripped... Just ripped apart. Now, I don't think these Glaives can go up here. Can they? I... No, no they can't. Nope, no they can't. Thought they might be able to. There is no way to get up there, so they can't easily harass around the back. The Swifts are, sure can, though. Swifts can take out everything around here. Just take out all... Yeah, take out the overdrive, take out the wind generators. Not much... Actually, that's a lot of overdrive. That's doubling. Yeah, every... Everything that's broken out of the overdrive grid, that's another two metal, that basically... Or another metal per second that's lost. Not quite two. Definitely one. So the wind generators are a great target. Now, where's that Dante? That Dante is done. Dante is done, it's been deployed, it's moving out. But these Reapers are... Well, they should be able to get rid of this the Shieldbot factory, and after that, there's no Shieldbots. There's the Dante and some Swifts, and Thrun already basically has air dominance, taking out the north side expansion. Forever, even if they hold this off, I think it's just too far behind. Like, Thrun, I think, is expanding. Oh, they're not expanding. They just have so many Reapers. How many Reapers do they have? Seven? Six. This Dante is the only thing. That, that Dante... The counterattack with the Dante has to be able to basically punch through and wipe out Kloon's main base if Forever wants to have a chance to win. A chance to win. They won't necessarily win right away, but that would give them a chance to win. I mean, that Dante's got a huge amount of health. I think, how much is, yeah, it's 640 per double cannon shot. It'll take about 10 volleys to get rid of the Dante. And that... This Reaper's dead. The second Reaper is probably going to die pretty soon. Get one more volley in! Don't die before that next volley! No, it's going to die before the next volley. It's not going to... No, it's dead. Shoot. But yeah, it looks like Forever is... I think vaguely aware what they have to do. Not sure how aware they are what they have to do. But, like I said, it's... Forever is so far behind. It's just... They have to hit with the Dante. They have to do a ton of damage with that Dante. And at this point, Clone's had a chance to regroup. Massive harassment force going around the northeast side of the map. While at the same time, everything needed to destroy a Dante, near the Dante, killing the Dante. And Clone runs it back in loser's bracket. Getting revenge on forever. And winning. So now we're going to move on to the winner's finals. Because that was basically just there to fill space until the winners' finals happened. And I believe the first map of that is listed on the page accurately, and it is 
What? I have... What? I don't know, actually. What? What is it? The Winter's Finals actually haven't been pointed out. Okay, Sierra loses pre-finals, but I don't know winners. I guess Sierra maybe. I have no idea. I don't know which one the losers, the winners final is gonna be. Whatever. It's yeah. It is a. It is a map. I don't know which map it is. It's a mixing tool. See, I don't know which one it is. I don't... Wait, are we... So at this point, yeah, we have... Throne, Forever, Kane... Felthos, Goofrog, and Yogstoth. Or, sorry, Felthos and Yogstoth are the current competitors. There's five left. So, Goofrog and Kane, I guess? I'm not sure. Not sure who's up. Was it Google Frog or Yogg's not that one? So yeah, loses round five is the pre-finals. I really don't know why. Like, Challenge does not have it set up properly for double a limb. This should be winner's finals. This should be loser's finals. This should be grand finals. And this is like winner semis. Loser semis one two. I, I don't know. I think loser semis one two. Losers quarter one two. Losers pre finals. Losers finals. That's what I call them. Like just set the brackets up differently. So these are like round sixteen winners, semifinals winners, all that stuff. Right. So I'm oh, no, sorry. Forever's not in. Yeah. So Clun, Clun, Kane. One of Yogstoth and Google Frog and Felthos. So Kane has gotten at least fourth place. Cool. Well done. I mean, they're pretty powerful opponents, too. Floris is pretty good. Forever did beat them 2-0, but yeah, Floris is quite good. Aquinum's quite good. So well done, Kane. Does mean I don't have a co-commentator, because Floris wanted to play Mech Warrior online, and Kane is still playing. I don't know, maybe it's Eye of Horus. I'm not sure. Oh, it's Titan Duel, really? Yeah, Lori forgot to... Okay, it's I have four, I don't know what's going on. Lori forgot to actually set up everything. Hey, they forgot to set up the unless I guess semifinals. I guess that's what they mean by semifinals is winners finals. So losers finals is Valus Manoneras. Semi winners finals is I have Horus. Grand finals is Titan Duel. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> 